Hello and welcome to That British Homestead. My name's Nick and today I thought I'd take you along harvesting some peas. So let's get started. Basically today I'm going to be harvesting these lovely Shiraz peas. I've been growing them for a little while now and I thought I'd let some of them develop into seed so I have enough seed for next year. I always think it's so important to have seed for the following year. I like to save seeds of most of my crops so that I grow strains that are very well adapted to my particular location. Now I've talked about this particular garden bed before, it is a back to Eden method. I use the back to Eden method in my garden to make it very easy, less weeds etc and every year I top it up with wood chips. Um, I get the wood chips from the council in where I live, they do a lot of chipping of trees which is obviously their jobs but I use one that's local to me that doesn't disturb baby birds which I really like so for example if there's a mummy bird with a load of eggs then he doesn't do any chipping until the bird will leave the nests naturally which I really like so he delivers whole tree which means the leaves and everything and I use that on my crops now I've been doing this for years and I do know that, for example, down the allotment, they really, really do say you shouldn't really use wood chip just in case it's been sprayed, etc. And I know that's a big deal lately here in the UK. However, I've never had an issue with it so far, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but it is something that in the back of my mind I do think, oh no. But once again, if you grow, if you can grow beans in something, it doesn't have any pesticides in it. That is kind of the rule of thumb. If they grow well, then it's okay. These peas are done really well, and I've grown tons of food in here this year. Lots of sweet corn, etc. So I'm not particularly worried about that. But it is something that I always bring up to because obviously do your own research, which is always very valuable. Um, but this back to Eden approach really works well for me here in the back garden as I'm having less and less time um, devoted to this space because of my allotment, which is very common I hear in people that have allotments. But I use this area as a source of overspill for all of the plants that, believe it or not, I can't fit down the allotment, which is great. I've grown a lot of corn here this year and I'm going to probably grow all corn here next year because we don't have rodents. So that's really beneficial for us cabbages and corn easy to grow at home so that's what I'm going to be doing so it's important that I kind of spread the load so that I don't have to worry yeah, a lot of them have gone to see look I've got a new tripod and I'm still kind of working out how to use it so bear with me but look all gone to see I think because it's so freaking warm these ones haven't though these ones haven't gone to seed as you can see these ones are fine but this one has i'm not sure why so we've had a really unseasonable warm period during the well autumn really we've actually just got our first frost and it's the 7th of december amazing like i went out a few times just to go out and sort of like crunch down the grass but i think that this has really led to things being really really difficult to grow so, for example, all my Napa cabbage have gone to seed. Why? I'm pretty sure it's because it thinks it's spring. So it is actually going to seed because it thinks it is spring, whereas really it's not. But it's so incredibly warm for this time of year that it believes that it is. It's actually got very cold recently. Well, when I say very cold, like it feels more like winter. It's got that sort of bite to the air. But it is nowhere close to what it would be normally. I mean... When it's so warm, the I think everything's got confused. I mean, I'm seeing daffodils come up, etc. So it is the sort of year where, I don't know, this we the weather's been very strange. It's been incredibly hot over the winter, so much so that we've actually had home pipe bans in much of the country. And now it's like this really warm period where you will end up like having strange events happening with your plants like my napa cabbage my napa cabbage i think i'm just going to let it go to seed i might collect the flowers as sort of a broccoli i'm not 100 percent sure yet I'm trying to make the garden with this garden particularly very low maintenance because we've got so much room in the allotment 
but obviously I don't want this is one of the loaded. easiest things to save from seed it's runner beans golden own oldie I think it's a really unappreciated crop I used to eat tons of these as a kid whenever you say runner beans it reminds me of my nan she used to grow runner beans hello and welcome to that British homestead today today I thought that I would go through shelling some beans beans even these beans are run the beans and they have the oops they've been drying on the plant aren't they pretty these are perennial apparently well they at least last one year i didn't pull them up properly last year and they grew again how cool is that so i am getting to the point where i'm getting quite a few of these beans which is pretty cool. I'm thinking about growing them, in some, uh, cooking them in some way. Maybe you're making them into baked beans or kidney beans or something like that. I have a new um, tripod. Do you remember how I said Bailey was had eaten my tripod? So I bought a new one. And I'm still kind of getting to the point of using it. So you have to bear with me. It doesn't... Like, it doesn't really work the same as my old one. I don't know if I like it yet or not. So, yeah. So, I'm not too sure. What do you guys do with your runner bean seeds? I just get loads of them every year. Um, and I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with these. Probably going to make them into, like, baked beans or kidney beans or something like that. I think that's a really good idea because I tend to eat a lot of beans in the year. And it'd be so cool if these count as beans because I get so many of them. So I'm going to probably look into what I can do with them. I've got an absolutely terrible cold at the moment. That's why I haven't really been doing anything this weekend because... I've just been very ill and I don't want, like, I have to go into work on Monday, so I don't want to do too much and then miss work. So Christmas is very soon. I'm very excited. Oops. It is now the, coming up to, oh, it's the 4th. So it's now the 4th, which means it's only a few days away from the longest day of the year, which is very exciting because the longest day of the year means that the birds are going to start, or well, the shortest day of the year, means that the birds are going to start to lay again. And I'm really looking forward to fresh eggs because we've been a little while without them. This summer has been a really bad summer for birds, which is not as great as I thought it would be because it's been very hot and dry. I'm shelling these, you want to help? Yeah. So just Yeah. Right. Don't get them all over the floor though. I remember doing this before. Yeah, we used to do these with board beans in the spring. Do you remember board beans? Where did you get that pot from? Nah, that's just an old fruit basket. So I was very appreciative of little Jasmine coming in and helping me do these beans. Like, it was just so lovely to sit here and have a little chat with her and have a little ch um, talk. She's quite pale and I'm quite pale because, like I said, we both have colds. Not flu, but colds. Um, and we did feel a little bit under the weather and not like we wanted to go down the allotment for very long. I'm very lucky because my partner could go down and sort the chickens out, therefore leaving me to sort of do stuff like this because I felt a little bit better, which was very nice for him. Um, but, I mean, very nice for me, even. Um, Jasmine loves doing this sort of like little busy work, like shelling peas and shelling beans. The only problem with shelling peas is that she eats half of them, um, especially when they're like fresh and plump and spring peas. Uh, half of them go in her mouth and not into the bowl. But I think that is one of the sacrifices that you do pay if you're going to have a small child help you do anything. It's like Jasmine will help you pick strawberries but her mouth is a bowl and she will eat 
I was going to say half, but that's not really true. She'll eat all the strawberries. I remember once me and, me and my partner were like, why are we getting no strawberries from this patch? Like, I can't understand. And it was because little Jasmine used to creep underneath the netting because that was where we had the bird netting up. And she would eat all of the strawberries, all of them, before we even looked. She'd even eat them when they're just turning colour, which is grim, I personally feel. But she used to eat them as soon as they started, like, blushing. Even white, she'd eat them. So we didn't even have a look into any strawberry for at least two years before they kind of multiplied out of her, you know, ability to eat them, which is just, <laughs> it is good. It's nice that we have a jar that loves vegetables so much, so much so that when the Brussels sprouts come in, I actually have to hide them. I have to hide them really high up in the fridge so she can't see them because if she sees a Brussels sprout, she'll eat them raw. Ugh, with the midges and everything I just I just can't even but it does say that you know she she's loves her vegetables um I, I want to like Brussels sprouts but man they are a very strong flavor I kind of cook them in butter and then fry them with like a load of bacon to make them taste a little bit more palatable in my opinion but Jasmine just absolutely adores them to the point where she will pretty much only eat very strong tasting cabbages because they taste like more brussely so I guess it's like everybody each their own isn't it but she does absolutely adore the brussels sprouts I think it, Christmas is about her favorite time of year because she gets to eat lots and lots of them each their own isn't it she does like beans especially baked beans and I'm quite excited about having these as sort of a backup I have about a pint jar um, or two pint jar I should say really in the garage full of beans which I'm going to probably go ahead and cook in a recipe sometime soon like I said we do eat a lot of beans and it would be nice to use these as a substitute because I end up buying lots and lots of them kidney beans and I never remember what they're called but you know them little kidney beans that look exactly like kidney beans but smaller we eat a lot of those in things like chilies etc for example if we cook a bolognese i will turn that into a chili or a lasagna or whatever so that we're not throwing anything away basically i think that's important and beans do, do make your meal feel a lot more and they are a really good for you so it would be interesting to have something like that i'll probably go ahead and can a few and see what that's like and see how well they would go into dishes because i do quite like how um, it's going to sound gross, but I like how mushy some of the pe beans are. So they kind of disintegrate within a meal and like kind of getting incorporated into the sauce. I really like that about beans. Um, we've at the moment just had a whole day or a whole week even of having bolognese and then chilli and lasagna. So we're kind of all of that out at the moment. But it would be nice in the future to have that sort of on tap. I like having it as like a sort of convenience food. So you can just grab it off the shelf and go. We are also finding all the beans that we have saved, such as the French beans. I grew a load of French beans this year just for the seed so that I could expand how much seed I have. Beans are really, really exciting. They tend to self-pollinate which is really exciting we're also using um, some scissors to just chop the ends off of some of the peas because uh, they are very slightly difficult to open up and um, pull out as you can see it is so much easier to snip the end to open them up more freely now it is once again something that I love doing with jazz I love being able to sort of share this experience however it also is keeping an eye on her with the scissors um etc she's very good and she's quite she she listens quite a lot and she does like to help so it is always very good and these are the sort of memories that I remember with my nan doing things like that like making cakes and making chutneys and sitting on the side and you know sticking your fingers in every pot as all kids do and it is quite nice to have this we are going to probably save all of these like I said and I did notice that some of the beans peas sorry were even sprouting this time of year because I did leave it that little bit too long to go ahead and open to collect them in because I was waiting for the peas to sort of really mature before I collected them in um I think next time I might actually let them dry on the inside so I'm laughing at Jasmine eating them um 
I really like this particular type of pea because it has a purple pod. But sadly, whenever you cook the purple potted peas, they do turn green. So that is something to bear in mind. Um, it makes it that little bit less special, I feel. But like Jasmine's very well demonstrated it, you can actually eat them raw. I quite like dipping them into maybe some hummus or something, which I find particularly lovely, or some ranch dressing. I absolutely love ranch dressing. I don't know what it is with that stuff, but it's absolutely amazing. I also found a, a dressing with cheese and artichokes. I love that, like artichoke hearts, I thought it was amazing, I found that this year, and we absolutely gobbled them up, it was really nice, you have to like overcook the artichoke until it's like, basically just mushy, oh man, it was so good, and um, I definitely will try that again in the spring, when we get some more artichokes, so that'll be very exciting, um, I think we've got some more artichoke seeds as well, so I do want to grow lots more of those. That is artichoke globes, not the roots, but maybe the roots would be good for it as well. It was absolutely delightful. So it's always nice to try new foods. I'm always trying to incorporate things that grow super well into my diet so that I'm able to eat seasonally, eat locally and have interesting food. I wouldn't class myself as a foodie, but I do like good tasting food and I find it difficult to eat boring or dull or basic food sort of like every day. I like to make it quite exciting because, well, food is a language of love, isn't it? It's how you show people that you love them and how, you know, you really treat yourself, in my opinion, of course. So I think it's great making food that you grow yourself taste amazing. Now, I said this last time, but food that you do grow yourself do does taste better than food that you would get from anywhere else because of course a it tastes better because you've worked so hard for it and b it's because it just generally tastes better if you grow it so differently you're growing it organically and i mean when we're talking about organically but when you grow your own food like you know exactly what is on there you know you've known that plant since it was a little seed in a packet or maybe even before that maybe you've even saved that seed and it is a wonderful experience to have and share with people and you do taste the difference in my humble opinion it's like the potato the potato tastes better the tomato tastes just better and it's aimed for beans and peas it is a little bit difficult learning how much to grow for yourself um and it's just trial and error. So I try to grow as much for myself and to save seed, which can be a little bit challenging sometimes. Um, I did quite a nice job of it last year. I don't know how well I've done it this year until, of course, I start and harvesting all of the stuff that I have saved the seeds of. You see what I mean? The proof is literally in the pudding. I would like to think that I have... Um, or can or am able to grow one day a year's worth of food for my family. Now, like I said, I do like to eat seasonally. But however, I do freeze and preserve food. For example, I have at the moment about a year's worth or a little bit more than a year's worth of tomato sauces and salsas. Oh man, I love salsa. And I will be eating that for the next year or so. Of course, tomatoes are not in season, but they've got to last me all the way up until tomatoes do go into season. I don't really eat tomato sauce in the summer very much, if that makes sense. I tend to eat it in the winter where it's nice and cold. There's nothing more, nothing I want more. It's like Swede as well. Swede is when I want it in the winter. 